Hi there, I'm Dr. Bjarne Berg. I'm an Associate Professor of Computer Science. And today, as part of the SAP University Alliance, we're going to look at how to use HANA step by step. <coughs> First of all, we're going to look at how to model tables, create views. We're going to learn how to load data using Business Objects Data Services, and then how to deploy these views, analytical and attribute views. And we're going to look at how to get them into Business Objects Explorer and look at it on the front end side. We have to give thanks to Lorraine Gardner at the State University of California at Chico, who's been developing this case study, one of the lead people to that. So first of all, the outline of this is basically going to be adding a new HANA system, very short steps. Then we're going to create a custom table for customer. We're going to load it into Business Objects Data Services. <coughs> then we're going to go to HANA Studio and take a look and see what we got. And then we're going to create and attribute views to list the customer master data and join it with a few other tables. Then we're going to create an analytical view where we basically load join the products table, the customers, and the, and the sales orders. <coughs> and then we're going to jump over to BO Explorer and create an information space. And that information space we're going to pick up on the BI front end. So we're going to get to see this step by step cradle to grave. So first of all, we go into our HANA studio in admin console, console <coughs> and then basically add our host names and then give them some sort of description. We need to have a user, so in this case I'm just logging on with the username and password that my admin gave me. And I'm ready to now start developing the uh, start developing the master data table. So I go into the admin console. And in the admin console, all I need to do is scroll down to my user. This is the Global Bike Incorporated, user number 50. I go to the tables, and I right-click, and it says, let's create a new table. So as I do that, I can then just type in my column names, as you see here. There's a whole slew of data types I can select from. And I make the sizes of the fields. And in this case, I decided the customer name was going to be customer numbers was going to be a key so of course it defaults into not null can't be a blank there so this is very much like an access database where you just type the tables step by step and you add all the fields and click that little green cross if you need more so now my table is basically uh, completed and I click my execute button on the top side and that'll create the table so here's my table and I have a table called customer attributes and I'm user number 50, so that's my naming convention. And then I have my data type and data length. The next thing I need to do is now, I need to go into business objects. And I need to get the data into that. So the first thing I do, I just right click at the bottom and go to my menu. Select data, service, data services designer, which is part of the business objects tool set. And I log on to the data services. And I have to enter my repository, which is basically the database where I have access to to basically store, store my data jobs. Once I'm in here, I will see the HANA sitting out here in the repository, local objects. And I have one now add in a new one. So I'm going to go in here, and it says, what do you want to connect to? In this case, I do want to connect to SAP HANA. And I type in the version. I type in the database server name the port, username and password, and I'm up. And you only do that once. Once it's done, you never have to do this again. You can keep loading more data into that HANA, HANA side. So the next thing I want to do, so I'm connected to this data services now to HANA. Now I want to import the table structure. So all the definition I just created back in HANA, I want to get access to those table definitions inside data services. So I'm going to import it by name. I could import everything, but I'm importing by name, and I'm typing in my table name, and I'm the owner of that one. And as soon as I've done that, I will basically be able to see, data services can now see the table that sits inside HANA, all the definitions are there. And I'm doing here underneath this one, which is the local repository. So data service is now linked to HANA. The next thing I want to do is I want to load some flat files. So I click on this format button at the bottom here. And it's, 
it's give me a flat file option. I can also load with JDBC and ODBC and XML. There's a lot of things that I can load, but in this case, I'm just going to load some flat files. So I right click and click on new, and it takes me into this editor. And in this editor, I'm typing in, it's a delimited file. It's going to be located on my wherever the source is located and the file name. And as you see here, it's defaulted to comma delimited. But in my data, it's actually semicolon. So I'm going to go back and change those. And once I change it over to a semicolon here in the side, it's able then to detect. You see the headers are in my first row up here. It de detects that. It reads the data. It gives me guesstimates or mapping. And then you're, of course, free to change that. You're afraid, free to modify these however you want on data type and data length. But it does give you, based on the data set, it auto -map maps it for you. So what I have done so far is basically I have now mapped the data structures from the in files I want to load. I mapped the data structures to HANA. And I now need to join them and do some data mapping. So let's create a project. First of all, let's click on the pro open the project here. And I go in and I create a new project. Right click and says new project. Give my project some sort of name that I can recognize. And then I'm going to create a batch job. So up here I create new batch job, which is basically allows me to load this however often I want to. And I'm ready. If you notice in this job, it takes me to new palette here. It says new new jobs down here, and I have all these selections on the right side. And that's what I'll be working with. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to go in and drag one of these down. And that's going to create a new data flow. So the data flow gets dropped into the canvas, and I give it some sort of name. Then I go down to this side. And this is, again, remember I mapped my inbound files, my customer files. And I'm going to go in and take one of those flat files, and I'm going to drag and drop it in to the canvas and make it a source. Just right click and says make it a source. So flat files are going to be source. So here it sits. Now I click on the other tab down here and I go to HANA. And I drag the HANA, HANA table structures in, right click and make it a target. So here they are. Flat file, HANA table. And it's a drag and drop from here and I just drag them down to this side and drag the others it says I want to use this sort of data flow queries to load this one into that. And as I double click on the query now, I'm taken into this screen. So it shows me, here's the flat file, here's the HANA side, let's go ahead and map those. And I can do all sorts of transforms and selects and coding and all sorts of additional stuff in this one. Or I can just take these one by one and click on this and drag it over here and then create my source target mapping. And when they're all mapped, you notice that these fields here, it turns a little green blue button and a little blue here, like a little B. That means this field is now fully mapped to that. So everything is mapped and we're good to go. So now we need to run the job. So let's go ahead and do that. We go up to this job up here, let's execute it. And it says you're gonna change these objects. So let's click a yes on that. Once I click yes, it says, let's monitor and see how the job is running every five seconds. We can put trace and statistics. We can collect a lot of different things in here. But in this case, I'm just going to run it very simple. I'm going to click collect every five seconds, and I can see the log as the log is building. And it now says it has completed successfully. So now I'm ready to go over to HANA Studio and see, hey, what does the data look like? And if I go to the table right now and just open the data preview, right click on the table, I would see all the data that has been loaded in. So in this case, it took 62 milliseconds to my, load my 25 records into HANA Studio. So now I have a table. The next step is <clears throat> I want to be able to query that table with master data. So I'm going to create an attribute view. I'm going to add a couple of more information about that customer and then I'm going to deploy that attribute view. So that's like master data reporting. So first of all, I go in here and open the perspective in HANA Studio. Open the perspective, click on the modeler, 
And as I get to the modeler, I'm going to create a new package. That's a new way to organize my work. So I'm going to organize my work in one, one area. And in this case, I'm going to call it something to keep attribute due for customer data. And I'm going to give it some sort of name. I just press OK. The next thing is, I'm going to go down to that package and I'm going to say new. Let's create an attribute view. And it says, OK, what do we want to call it? We're going to call it customer attribute view number for user 50s, just to separate myself. You probably will have your own naming conventions, how you want to do it. And you notice this view type. It gives me an attribute view. So if I click the wrong thing here, I can always go over and switch over here and just change it over from attribute view to analytical view. But we're going to go forward with the attributes. So this takes me into this editor. And in this editor, I just dragged the customer table and I dropped it into the data foundation. And that means it shows up on this side. So here's all the stuff that's available in my table. And what you notice is that they're all gray, meaning none of this will actually be in the output as of now. So let's add in a couple more tables. So I'm going to navigate to another table here in the catalog. In this case, I'm dragging over the country and the sales organization. So here I have my, my customer stuff that I just loaded. And I drag in my, sa my sales org. And I drag in my country. And I add these joints. Just click and drag and add, add the joints. So sales org links to sales org. I can see the language and short text. And from country, I can see the language and short text for country as well. Now, I'd want to do some filtering. I only want the valid customers. So I'm going to click on valid and right click and say apply filter. And under apply filter, I type in this equal to something. Of course, I could have filtered here equal to city name, city name filter, only the one in New York, only LA or London. So you're free to basically filter whatever else you want to include in your, in your views. So here now they'll show up. As I click on these icons, these are the ones I want to show in my view. And you can see they're popping up here as columns. So this is what users will have access to. And I don't want to show them value to and from, so I'm just applying filters for that. So that's not going to be in the view. So you can see that stuff being grayed out. The next thing, next thing is the view itself needs to have a key. Think about a key attribute. So I'm going to go in here in this customer number. And as I click on it, I'm going to select it in as a key attribute. So customer number is going to be the access into this view. And here's my view. Everything is available to the view right now. That's what it looks like. Now, if I want to do a little bit extra stuff, I can drill down and enable things. So in this case, I'm going to drill down and enable the sales organization. I'm going to make this. This means that people can navigate and drill down on other fields. So I'm going to make sales org and drill down. I'm also going to go in here and change country. So country is going to be a drill down if you want to drill down to state and city and so forth. So just changing these drill down enabled fields. Um, so now I'm going to save it up here. I save it. It's going to run a validation and tell me if it actually saved it, the errors in my view. It's going to give me feedback. But this went pretty well. So now I have an attribute view. Let's work a little further. Let's take it into an analytical view. So I go in and add a new analytical view. And in this case, I've dragged in my customer attributes. You remember I had a customer attribute you just built? I also had a product. And this is going to be in the logical joins. But I'm, in my data foundation, I'm adding my sales data. So let's take a look at what that means. It means that the stuff I just built a few seconds ago are now showing up here. This is everything that was available to me in the view. But I also had another view somebody else built from a view to products. And then I just dragged my data foundation, my sales data that just came in from whatever source. It could come from an Oracle, a JD Edwards, an SAP system. And I put them in here and just link them. So that the products information here is now linked to all this product here. And the customer information is linked to all these customers here. And here we can see the output. This shows you all the outputs that are available to me. Uh, I want to create a calculated column. So I'm just going to click on this, click on the right click and go to new. And this takes me into this editor. I'm going to give a new one. I'm going to call it net revenue. It's going to be decimal, 17, two decimal points. 
and I'm going to go down here and write the operand. So it's revenue minus discount. I can also use conversions and string functions and mathematical functions. There's a lot of functions, but I'm making simple. Net revenue is revenue minus discount. And it's going to be applied with the currency. So people, if you have currency loaded in here, you would be able to see it in euros or US dollars. We'll see that a little later. So now we're ready. I want to go into this attribute view and I want to do a data preview and then I would see it. Okay, so let's see where we are now. We build customer data. We have loaded the data. We have taken a peek at the data, build our customer attribute view and build an analytical view that joins to products and also joins to sales. But we haven't seen anything. So let's go up and take a look in Business Explorer, what we could do. So first of all, I log on to my Business Explorer stuff and I'm going into my Bio Explorer. And in this case, I look at the Manage Spaces, Information Spaces, and I want to create a new one. So in this case, I'm going to go to New Information Space. And as I do that, I'm taking into this view. So let's call it Sales. Sales based on my analytical view in HANA. Keywords, you can put that, so it's easier to search when you're looking for it later. I want to show it on my favorite, my homepage. I want to put it in my favorite folder. And here you see it says InfoCube name. For me, it's not really an InfoCube. It is the HANA view. So here's my setup, my 51, and there's my sales attribute view 51, and there's some sort of description of the source. So even though it says it's InfoCube here, in this case, it's really my view. Next thing that happens is it shows me all the stuff that's available to me. So here I can drag over uh, private attributes, month, unit of measures, currencies, customer numbers, and all that stuff in here. And you recognize here's my net revenue that I created in the view before. All that stuff is available to me inside this one. Once I'm finished, I just save that, click OK and save it. And there's my new, my new information space. If I open up that information space in Business Explorer, it would look something like this. What it would allow you to do then is I would see my occurrences, my revenues, my sales, my view calculated figure. Of course, Business Explorer take a guess at it. So it thinks product name and product category and product group. There's like an implied hierarchy here, year, month, and so forth. And it shows me a best guess on number of occurrences. So how many, how many do air pumps did we sell? and how many um, different areas. You can also see this performance. You notice here that there was 48,384 records retrieved in less than an eighth of a second. And that's really the power of HANA. HANA allows you to retrieve tens of thousands, millions of records in sub-second speed. That is the real reason you do this. Of course, the HANA view could also have been deployed into uh, analysis or dashboards or designer studio or a uh, webby it could be deployed into anything that you want afterwards and that takes us to the end of this demo so uh, I appreciate you for listening and hopefully this illuminate a little bit more of what HANA is all about thank you